Jesse, for that wonderful rendition. Warms my heart. Uh, I, I don't think I need to preach anymore because you just heard it all. <laughs> um, Calimera, beloved friends and church family at FCC on the Zoom. In case Margarita hasn't taught you that word yet, it means good morning, Calimera. And since we're celebrating Hispanic Month, perhaps I should have said buenos dias. As you know, uh, Spanish is my original language. I was born in Ecuador and came here not knowing a word of English, uh, speaking only Spanish. And uh, it was very hard uh, growing up uh, in the United States as an immigrant. And um, that fear of uh, being called names, uh, stiff is one of the, the names that I lived with. Uh, it made me think less of myself and what I was. And that lived with me through much of my adulthood until I came here. Um, and uh, You all saw beyond my fears, my inhibitions, my low confidence, uh, my, um, my stress. 
and you encouraged me in my faith. It is here at the First Congregational Church that my faith walk began with, with God. It actually started about two years before that. You all began to nurture me in the way of the Lord. And so, as Pastor said, I am a product of you, of your encouragement, of your love, of your trust that what God has prepared for us is good, is noble, and is praiseworthy. So I am here because of you, and I thank the Lord for you. And uh, today we don't have uh, deep theological arguments uh, or positions about uh, what to give to Caesar and what to give to God. No, but other than an affirmation that your encouragement, that your trust in the Lord, that your confidence in what he has given us to work with, that it is all good and noble, makes a difference in lives like mine, in, in this community. We make a difference, you make a difference. And so, um, based on the hymn that uh, Jesse just sang for us, I gather the Holy Spirit is telling you the direction that this message is leading us um, all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. And the key word is all. Let us pray. Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable to you, my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. Amen. So while preparing this message, I, last week I, I, I had a message. Pastor asked me uh, if I was ready to preach, and I said yes, and I had it all set. And, and last night, Margarita asked me, are you ready for, the, for your sermon? And I said, oh, yes, I have it, um, I have it all ready. And uh, I had just taken a nap. And, uh, and I said, let me go down and, and take a look at it again. And of course, the Lord uh, would have me change. At least half of the sermon is different than what I had last Saturday. And while I was preparing it, I always listened to music and I listened to, uh, to other preachers. And I heard the following phrase, which made me think, this fits well in the message, and that is, I quote, God gives the best to those who allow him to choose for them. Amen. Isn't that a deep statement? Wow. I surrender all. I surrender my choice of selecting for myself what I want to do, and I give God the choice of selecting for me. What a gift. God has given us the gift of free will. Hopefully, at the end of this message, we'll go home determined to give back to God all that we are and all that we have to offer God the best of us. So let me start by stating one spiritual truth that connects with today's uh, scripture. We are body, soul, and spirit. Amen? Yes. After our days, when God calls us to rest, our physical bodies will return to dust, to Caesar, who represents the world, the dust from which we came. Amen? However, our soul, our spirit, our heart belongs to God, and we will rise again one day to be with God for eternity in our heavenly mansion. Okay, that's as theological as we're going to get today. <laughs> so the key verse that Margarita read today is, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Matthew 22, 21. So again, like I said, no theological revelations, just affirmations that your presence and that your love and your encouragement and that your trust in God's word makes a difference in lives like mine, in this community. So I'm not going to speak about what belongs to Caesar, nor about our obligations to tithe and uh, pay taxes and our offerings to the church, except to say that it goes well with our soul when we do these things honestly and joyfully, because God loves a cheerful giver. Praise the Lord. Amen. In today's gospel, we see an encounter between Jesus and the Pharisees trying to trap 
him and to kill him. They wanted to do away with him. They asked Jesus, is it right to give tribute to Caesar? Caesar? A more accurate translation of the Greek text would render, is it lawful under the law of Moses to give tribute to Caesar or not? Now the Pharisees posed a yes or no question. If Jesus said that it was lawful to pay the tax, they, that it was not lawful to pay the tax, they would report him to the authorities and Rome would arrest him and, uh, on charges of sedition. If he says that it is lawful, Jesus would be discredited in the eyes of the Jewish followers who followed the Mosaic law. Either way, they thought they had him trapped. Jesus was cornered. But Jesus is not one who answers with a yes or a no. Jesus' response is magnificent. I quote, you hypocrites, who are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying taxes. So they brought him a denarius and he asked them, whose image appears in this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said, so give to Caesar that what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. What a brilliant answer. And those who asked the question knew it. The scripture says, when they heard this, they were amazed, and so they left them and went away. Now, we must give to Caesar what is Caesar's. The Lord placed in my heart the following to review with you today. What and how much belongs to God? As we sang, give it all to Jesus. Amen? End of sermon. Now, I have a few more words to hear. <laughs> so let me start with a question for you. If the coin bears the image of Caesar, where can we find the image of God? In, yes, amen, in our hearts. The Bible says that we were created, that God created you and me in his image, that all things were created by him and for him. Therefore, everything, all that we have, all that we are, belongs to Jesus. Give it all to Jesus. To God belongs our time, our worship, our witness, our talents, our treasures, our hopes, our love, our trust, our encouragement, and our dreams. So my task today is to invite you to allow God to choose for, for to allow God to choose for you all that is good and pleasant and noble and praiseworthy, to set your heart on giving back to God what is God's, to give God the best of your witness, of your worship and work in order to build up God's kingdom here on earth for those like me. So the first one is our witness. Our witness belongs to God. Give to God what is God's. I tend to forget things very easily, particularly names. I forget names a lot, so I beg your forgiveness if I don't know your, or if I don't speak out your name, uh, because I do forget very easily. Uh, so I, I love places where we wear name tags and we can, <laughs> we can see each other's name, because it, it saves me a lot of embarrassment. There's people that I've known for 15 years and I see them every every week and when they come up to receive communion, all of a sudden their name just goes away. I was thinking of, uh, of my nephew-in-law's name for the last week and I couldn't remember his last name. I knew his, his first name, but I couldn't remember his last name. Um, and there's other names in, in today's uh, message that I'm going to share about. I couldn't remember her name uh, for about three months and just last night I remembered and added that back into the sermon. So I tend to forget very easily and that's why I keep a journal. So I encourage you, keep a journal because someday it's going to help you remember. Reading my 2011 journal, I recalled some heartwarming details about an office colleague 
with whom I spent countless hours talking about my life, my witness, before and after Christ. Michelle Longo, that's the name I had forgotten. I couldn't remember that for three months. She was a hard-working executive. For a time, like many of us, like me, uh, she drifted away from the faith and the church, but in her search for peace and hope and purpose, she began attending the Bible studies that I led in my secular office together with Jill Calandrell and John Monroe. So during Bible studies and through her deep questions, Michelle began to trust God again and eventually returned to the church. She gave it all to Christ. Michelle battled cancer. And though she lost the physical battle, she won the final victory, entrusting her life and her child in God's hands. Michelle knew that her days were numbered and decided to give it all to Jesus. At her funeral, her son Mark, just 10 years old, stood up and said, I know that you all love my mom. I can see that from from your attendance here and she told me about many of you but she's no longer suffering she's no longer sick she no longer has anything to worry about now we just have to ask god to help us in our pain and that's what we do in our witness in our worship in our work we help each other to trust that god has good plans for us that God will heal us eventually, the eventual and the final healing will take place if we keep our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Though the body may perish, the soul and the spirit belongs to Christ. Everything belongs to him. And so we give it all to him. So I thank God for Michelle's life and witness. She taught her son and friends how to live with dignity and hope until the last breath to accept God's will and offer the best that we can to God and to church. That's what she taught. Now, sometimes we can lose our peace, our faith, and even purpose in our struggles, but as long as there is hope, as long as there is trust, we can be sure that God will work out things for the best. One of my favorite verses, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Today's reading directs us to give to God what is God's. The best of our witness belongs to God. We give God and we give his people our witness with love, with trust, with confidence, overlooking the faults in others, encouraging them always to walk in the faith. We give it all to Jesus. Second, our worship. Our worship also belongs to God. One of the primary reasons God created us was to have communion with us individually and to receive our exclusive worship as a body of Christ. God deserves our complete worship for all he's done to rescue us and restore our relationship with him. Worship is vital in nurturing our own faith and the faith of those who have lost hope or have lost their way, like my colleague, Michelle. We must demonstrate to our children, friends, and associates that worshiping God is first on our priority list. When we offer God the best of our worship, God will take care of the rest, amen? When we come to church, we are teaching our children and all of those who observe our lives that God is a priority and deserves our best, our first, and not the leftovers. Why? Because all we are and have belong to God. When our son Jean-Paul was uh, 11 years old, he played in a soccer field, in a soccer team for the city of Norwalk. And one Sunday they had two games. One scheduled at 9 a.m. and one at noon. And of course, the 9 a.m. conflicted with our worship service. So I informed the coach that
that Jean Paul would not be playing in the first game. I could have come to the eight o'clock service to accommodate accommodate this. Uh, we used to meet at eight o'clock around this table, but that would have given Jean Paul the, the message that game is more important than God. God does not come first, and so we didn't go to the game. I arrived to the second game. They won the second game, uh, thankfully. But what we taught is that in our home, worshiping God comes first. As Christians, we must stand firm against those who lead us away from our commitment to God and the church. To strengthen your commitment, be sure to feed on God's word uh, and commune daily with the Lord. If daily worship is our custom, then Sunday worship will be a priority instead of we'll go to church if we have time. We love and serve God in worship because here we experience the joy of full salvation and glorify His name. It's one of the verses in I Surrender All. When we surrender all to Jesus in our worship, He takes care of everything that belongs to Him. Like I said, our soul, our spirit, our heart, everything belongs to Him. Everything that is eternal belongs to Jesus. Our work also belongs to the Lord. So give God the work that we do for God. Everyone in church is called to work. I love seeing how uh, the musical team uh, prepares for, for worship. They, they are so precise and they keep doing it until they get it right, until they offer God and you the best of, of their talents. And each of us, no matter what is our age uh, or our capabilities, must also, even those, those of us that are sitting over there, uh, must also give God our, our best in, in our worship. We glorify God when we give our best to the Lord's work and try the hardest not to be a stumbling block or mur a murmuring backseat driver. Remember, in the desert, one of the things God disliked and Moses is those that murmur. Because when you murmur against Moses, you're murmuring against God. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 calls us to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. You may not see the results of your love, of your encouragement, of your witness uh, in your lifetime. But believe me, you are making a difference. You've made a difference in my life, and I know that you've made a difference in many, many other lives, many survivors, uh, not just of uh, breast, breast cancer, but survivors of, of suicide, of many other survivors of addictions. You've made a difference because you are here and you've given all to Jesus. Your work is not in vain. Everything we do for the Lord makes an eternal difference for the lives of those who have lost peace, faith, or hope. So what work can we do for the Lord? Let me suggest a couple of things. If you're not a member, I hope you're all members, but if you're not a member, talk to the pastor about joining the church. The Lord needs you. Surrender all to Jesus, amen? That's a great idea. So what do we mean by all? Glad you asked. Give to the Lord your hopes, your dreams, and your gratitude, your doubts, your concerns, your fears, your commitment to be a team player for the Lord. Give Him also your resentment, your resentments and your tendency to place blame on others as we said in our confessional prayer. Give the Lord your dissatisfaction. Give it to the Lord. The Lord can take it. Uh, some, of the, some of us are humans, and as humans, we, we don't react very good when all we hear is dissatisfaction, but we, we work our best when we hear encouragements, when people look beyond our faults and, <clears throat> and our inabilities and give us an encouraging word of, of hope. So rather than giving your dissatisfaction, Give him your encouragement. Ask the Lord 
to reveal areas in your life that prevent you from fully giving your best to God, to, to the church, to the pastor, to members and visitors. You can do all of these and many more things in gratitude and testimony for all that God has given and has done for you. There is much, much work that is needed in our community and you do make a difference. Your witness, your encouraging love and trust makes a difference. All faithful Christians worship God, they work for God, and ultimately testify for God. Now, 1 Peter 3.15 gives us this instruction. Always be ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. So, you all know I, I wrote a book. Uh, I started writing it two and a half years ago and I finally finished it this uh, January. It took me two years, a uh, very, uh, very difficult uh, time, uh, time consuming. Uh, but the book represents my encouraging testimony that God can and will make a difference in your life. If you don't have a testimony written down, start writing it. Like I said last time, your future generations will be so thankful that you left for them something in writing, in your own words about your love, your faith, your trust, your family, all of those little nuggets of, of stories that you want to share or that you want your great-grandchildren to hear, even if you're not there to tell it to them. So write them down. It will also help you to share your testimony uh, with the Michelles of this world who have lost their hope and feel discouraged and, uh, and need to get back into church and to worship Him. Begin by describing your life before you met Jesus and briefly detail your encounter and the change that resulted from that encounter. I would suggest don't try to write a lot. Start with maybe 500 words. That's what I do on a daily basis. Over time, refine and share your testimony with all who are willing to listen because you never know who is on the edge and needs to hear your encouraging words. I certainly needed to, to hear your encouragement when I came here in 1987, and I didn't know that 1988 was going to be the worst year of my life when, uh, when everything was falling to pieces. But God and you lifted me up because you had surrendered all to Jesus and you taught me how to trust in Him. In conclusion, what belongs to God? Everything. Uh, www, remember that. These are the things that we can do. Worship, work, Three things that we can do for God make an impact on those who observe our lives and are thirsty to find peace and hope amid a world of pain and suffering. We can make a difference when we put God first in our worship, work, and witness for the Lord. Michelle helped me a lot. For a time, I had lost confidence in my calling and ability to offer Bible studies in the office and even in church. Michelle's deep questions um, helped me to explore more profound things about God and life and to trust the training that I had received, training that I received from Reverend Jordan back here in, uh, in, in the kitchen. As a result, I modified the Bible studies into extended, deep theological-based conversations. So if we dedicate our time and to worship, to work, and to witness with grateful hearts, I am convinced that together we will make a difference in the lives of our family, of our community, and in the Michelles in our circles, and have the confidence that we've given to God what belongs to God. And the people of God said, Amen.